In this video, we're taking a look at last week's hot 10 to see if we should buy, sell, or hold. Stay tuned. Bryce Comics. Bryce Comics is hiring. I'm looking for a full-time presser um, to move down here to Paradise, California, where my shop is located. The pay is fantastic, $30 an hour full-time, and you get to work with comic books all day. You get discounts on comic books. I'm looking for somebody with at least five years experience pressing and cleaning comic books of all eras, because if I find someone, we're gonna open this up to the public to accept submissions for pressing, cleaning, submitting to CGC, and I need an absolute veteran of the trade so that we can be top of the line. I don't want somebody that I have to train. I want somebody that, that knows way more than I do about comic book pressing. If that's you or if you know somebody that might fit that bill that would be willing to relocate, I'm also willing to help with relocation fees. I'll pay for your U-Haul. Um, if you connect us, I'll take care of you. Please share that information with anyone you think might be interested. If you're new here, we do a monthly giveaway at Bryce Comics. This month is Amazing Spider-Man number one, the first cameo appearance of Cindy Moon, who later becomes Silk. Also, there's a monthly giveaway over at BryceComics.com. If you sign up for the newsletter, you're entered to win a free slab each and every month. And this video is in collaboration with Key Collector Comics. If you download Key Collector app and use code Bryce Comics, you get a free two-week trial of the app. And each week, Key Collector releases the hot 10 and the trending 20 and the hot 10 is the most significant sales in the comic book market related to established keys and the trending 20 is the most quantity of sales for given titles on eBay which there are two incredibly important lists to help keep up on what's going on in the market but mostly to identify trends and to use those trends for future purchases because a lot of times when books hit these lists it may be a little bit too late there's always exceptions to that sometimes there's books that still have great potential that hit these lists but you know you definitely wouldn't do well if you just bought every single thing that hit these lists on the long run you would you would lose so uh, I think videos like this are important because they not only highlight what is hot and trending but what is still a good buy what would be a good time to sell and so for all of those details let's hop into the computer Number 10 on the list is Batman number 181. This is the first appearance of Poison Ivy and Pamela Isley and an interior pinup poster of Batman and Robin, which was just irresistible for people to pull out and put on their wall and obvious for obvious reasons. I mean, look at how epic that is, making this book a little bit more scarce in complete uh, unqualified condition. This landed on the hot 10 because of this massive sale for a 6.5. Uh, which was 53% up from April of last year. And the reason this was getting some heat is because back in August, uh, it was announced that Bridget Reagan was going to play Poison Ivy in Batwoman Season 3. And let me ask you guys, did you know that Batwoman Season 3 was already out on the CW? Did you know that Poison Ivy has already made her debut on screen? I know that some of you have, but I know that the majority of you didn't, aren't aware of this, and will never watch this show. And it just it just speaks to my point that DC keys like this are not good for investment purposes. If this is something you want in your personal collection, it's something that you enjoy, absolutely, by all means, it's a fantastic comic book. But if you're just an investor and just a speculator, I would steer clear from almost all DC keys for the same for this reason. And just to speak to that point, did you know that Peacemaker had already debuted on HBO Max? I do this for a living. I am in comic books, in speculation every single day. And five days went by before I even knew that Peacemaker had released three episodes of this new series. And it just is, I don't know what is going on with the marketing over at DC, but you know, with Marvel and MCU properties, I mean, it is all over, blasted over social media. I don't even need to keep up on release dates. I just open my Instagram and I'll see, oh, Moon Knight trailer was released. 
Peacemaker can go completely under the radar. And my whole point is not to be down on DC or this show. I actually really am enjoying this Peacemaker show. Only point here is that they don't make good investments, but they make great collectibles. So if you're into this book, I think I would wait a little bit. I think it will come back down. If we look at GPA sales, um, You can here's the, the big spike when she was cast in the show. We saw a little dip. We saw it coming back up. I think it will come back down a little bit and then will continue to go up over time because it's just a fantastic key but it's a slow steady burn it's not something i would invest in but it's a great thing to have in your collection if you enjoy it number nine on the list is ultimate comic spider-man number one this is the first solo title and the second appearance ever of miles morales the first appearance of the ultimate prowler the uncle of miles morales in the ultimate universe and the first appearance of conrad marcus who later merges with the sample of the venom symbiote uh, really interesting little tidbit right there and the record breakers this week were the pakeli variant one in 15 and the pakeli variant one in 30 and um, there's an interesting little phenomenon going on where the 1 in 15 variants, which are this one, are kind of rivaling the availability and the sales numbers of the 1 in 30. The 1 in 30 still demands uh, a premium, uh, but it's just like an interesting little tidbit. I don't think it's anything more than just interesting. Another interesting thing is this book right here, An Absolute Ghost. There's only one CGC 9.8 sale on record from almost 10 years ago, and there's only five graded copies on the census. This is uh, a sketch version of the 1 in 15 here that was awarded to retailers who ordered 5,000 copies of Ultimate Fallout 4. Just an absolute ghost, and I'm very interested to see what happens with this book uh, when it comes back to market. But here's my pick for this book is the newsstand edition, which is indicated here by the barcode, um, where it just says newsstand. And uh, this book is way more rare than the one in 15 and the one in 30. Here's the sales for a 9.6. There's no recorded sale of a 9.8, but the last sale of a 9.6, there's only four recorded sales of a 9.6 for this book. 2025 uh, was the last sale in April of last year. And I actually also bought one private party for $2,000 right after this one. I, I missed out on this one on eBay and found a private party one for 2000 like right afterwards. And I think it's a fantastic um, investment because it's just so incredibly scarce and the newsstand phenomenon is only going to get more hot as time goes on. As more people become aware of it, it's going to demand more of a premium. Number eight on the list, we have Web of Spider-Man number 118, which is the first appearance of Ben Riley as Scarlet Spider, officially named in Spider-Man number 52. And the reason this is getting so much heat is that the Ben Riley Spider-Man title was actually released today, the day that I'm filming this, January 19th. So we had record breakers in the direct edition and the newsstand edition. And the newsstand edition is indicated, it just doesn't say the words direct edition, it's just a regular barcode. And just to do a little refresher on the newsstand direct phenomenon. So newsstand and direct edition started to be differentiated in 1979. Prior to 1979, it was all newsstand. All comics were sold at quote unquote newsstands. And then in 1979, direct editions popped up because comic book stores started to pop up and distributors started to sell comics directly to comic book stores, hence the name direct edition. So in 1979, newsstand editions were way more prevalent, and then as time went on, they became more rare. And on the flip side, in 1979, direct editions were incredibly rare, and over time became the only thing. 2013 was when Marvel stopped doing newsstand editions, and in 2017 is when DC stopped doing newsstand editions. So most of these books in this area right here shouldn't demand a premium because in 1979, 1980, 1981, there was way more newsstands than direct editions. And even in some cases, 1979, the direct edition should demand a premium, but that's incredibly rare. Um, you have some instances around this era, era where newsstands still demand a high premium, like Amazing Spider-Man 300 was in this area here, where even though there was more newsstands than directs of Amazing Spider-Man 300, 
less of them retained the 9.8 grade because of the distribution model. And that's an important point to consider. Also like Hulk 340 falls into that category. But then around this time is when newsstands, pretty much after 1986, pretty much all newsstands demand some kind of a premium, especially in high grade. And then when you get over here is where even in not 9.8 condition is when newsstands demand a premium because they're just so uber rare. So this book right here came out in 1994. Um, so newsstand editions are definitely out there, but they do demand a premium. And I think this is a good buy. I would uh, get in on it. I would wait a little bit. I think there is potential that we could see more come of this character. Um, maybe someday make it onto the screen, but I think it would be years and years from now. So I would wait until it dies down a little bit and then pick it up. Next on the list, we have Amazing Spider-Man number 134, and this is the first appearance of Tarantula and the second appearance of the Punisher, depending on what camp you're in. Um, here's all of the Punisher keys. It's a really good way to use Key Collector Comics is you can search by character, and it'll just bring up everything for that character. Uh, so here's the Punisher, first appearance in 129 second appearance and then some people call this the second appearance so this is 135 doesn't really matter we're not going to solve that debate here today but what matters is that the punisher keys are getting some heat because of the new emblem thing that's going on with the punisher and also some rumors you know circulating that he could make a, a reappearance in the mcu and for that reason i put this book at a buy i think that if we do get you know john bernthal reprising his role i think it it's gonna you know skyrocket this book and one of the big question marks for that for the punisher coming back is in what form are they going to do a pg-13 version of the movie that could actually have negative effects on this book and all of the punisher keys because it's kind of like what we saw with carnage they did carnage pg-13 and that is an r-rated character it just is same with the punisher and i kind of just have this sinking feeling that marvel would do a pg-13 version to which john bernthal has said he actually wouldn't reprise the role um, so we'll see if he follows through with that. We'll see what happens, but I think it's a good buy to just cross our fingers that they do uh, reprise his role in the MCU and that they do it in an R-rated version. So here's the GPA for a 9.4. As you can see, here's the market boom. Here's the correction, and it's going back up because of this heat uh, on Punisher because of the emblem change thing. But if we get anything in the MCU, expect this to go even higher. Um, here's the 129. Here's Amazing Spider-Man 129, the first full appearance of the Punisher. And um, as you can see, here's the market boom. Here's the correction. And we're headed back up. Next on the list is Marvel Spotlight number five, the first appearance and origin of Ghost Rider Johnny Blaze. And back in May, we got a rumor making the rounds uh, based off some concept art that Ghost Rider Johnny Blaze might cameo in Doctor Strange 2. We haven't got anything solid confirming that or anything since then and this book has been on an absolute tear and i think a big part of that is this monster monster sale of a 9.8 that happened back in june last year two hundred and sixty four thousand dollars this book is just incredibly rare in a 9.8 there's only four 9.8 copies um and so I think it presents a good opportunity. I think we're still seeing trickle-down effect for this book because of that monster sale. And some of these other grades, um, you know, haven't seen that drastic increase yet. And there's some opportunity there. So if we look at the census here, um, there's the, most of the copies are 7.5 um, or below. And... One interesting thing about the prices of this book is most people can afford like a 4.0 and a 5.0. So if you look at these uh, grade ranges where they're more affordable, like this one is at uh, 50, around $1,500, the more affordable copies are, are spiking really high. So here's a 5.0, you know, it's spiking really high. Here's Here's a 6.0. You're not seeing as drastic of a spike. You're seeing some variation, some ups and downs, some outlier highs, some outlier lows. Uh, so it's just an interesting thing. You know, here's a 7.0 that hasn't really spiked all the way. So I think in some grades, uh, this book, this trickle down effect still hasn't taken effect. And so there might be good deals to be had. But of course, if we get any kind of confirmation or get him in the MCU, all grades are going to just 
skyrocket for this book. It's kind of a gamble. I would probably stick with some of the other books, uh, even on this list, that are, are a little bit more, a little bit less of a gamble. Next, we have Star Wars Darth Vader number three, and this is the first appearance of Dr. Aphra, the first appearance of Triple Zero, and the first appearance of BT-1. And this book is just, I, I mean, it's shocking to see that a 9.8 is $650 for this book, seeing just where it was just a few months ago. However, if we get her confirmed in Disney+, Plus, this price is going to be an absolute steal. I mean, it could do $850, 1000 bucks for just the regular version and a 9.8 if we get her confirmed. This one also is kind of a gamble. You know, it all hinges on whether or not she makes an appearance in this Boba, this book of Boba Fett. If she gets confirmed or there's a very solid Easter egg or a tease that she's coming in book Boba Fett, this price is going to skyrocket. If she doesn't, if it's just crickets on the Dr. Aphra front, there's no confirmation, this price is going to plummet. It's going to crash hard. So I guess it depends on your uh, level of comfort with risk and how much you believe in this character. I think it's highly likely, um, but I'm not that much of a gambling man to go pick it up uh, for $650. I, it's not that I think it's a bad gamble. It's just I think there's more solid, more concrete stuff. Um, and I like to get in on things a little bit sooner. Um, so all that to say, this could have uh, some serious gains if we get her confirmed and it could come crashing down if we don't. And I do think that we are going to get her confirmed. That's just my guess. Amazing Spider-Man number three, number four on the list, first appearance and origin of Dr. Octopus. And this book, it, it's just crazy. A 7.0 saw a 68% gain from just a few months ago. Um, this book is just on a tear. A 1.5 saw a 100% gain from less than a year ago. Here's that record-breaking sale, the 7.0, just crushing the previous record. Clearly, Amazing Spider-Man is in its own category. I have a feeling that this price for the 7.0 isn't going to be uh, beaten for quite some time. That's just such a crazy high increase in such a short amount of time. Um, but if you look at you know, other grades, they're just all just going up. There's no correction. There's no market correction at all for this book um, or for Amazing Spider-Man in most cases. Then you get to here, you get to the 5.0, and here we had, you know, a really low sale that was actually quite a bit lower than the, than the previous price. So there are still good deals to be had. Not all grades are equal and keep your eyes peeled. You know, you might find a good deal on this book, which would be a great investment. All right. Next, we have Amazing Spider-Man number 194, the first appearance of the Black Cat. And as a reminder, we are still in the rumor and speculation phase for this book. Nothing is confirmed. And we're seeing some steady, consistent sales. Last week, it was number one on the Hot 10. And this week, we're seeing more gains. Um, so I put this book at a buy. Uh, I think... You know, newsstand and direct, there there shouldn't be any kind of premium for a newsstand or a direct of this book because it's from 1979 and they are uh, basically equal, even in high grade. There's just so many more newsstands out there that there's a lot of them made it to the 9.8. So this book absolutely does not does not demand any kind of any kind of premium with a new stand edition and that's indicated in this case by a line through the barcode the line through the barcode means it's direct no line means it's new stand so just ignore that don't pay a premium for um, a new stand book and this book is going to continue to get heat because of the error edition i just released that video recently about the error edition a lot of people did not know about the error edition and there's been some really healthy sales on the air editions, and it's just going to draw attention and bring heat to this. Keep an eye out that, you know, it, there is no differentiation on the sales platforms for air edition or regular edition. So there's going to be an 8.0 sale of the air edition here for $1,800 that just happened a few days ago. That's just going to show up as a regular sale. And as you can see, here's another 8.0 for 600 bucks. So that is a 3X markup for the error edition, which I think is totally justified. I did the whole video on it of how incredibly rare this variant is. I had a 9.6. I actually ended up selling my 9.6 for $4,000. Someone made me an offer and I took it. And it was funny, I sold it 
about 15 minutes before this one sold. And I knew I could get more for the book. I knew it was worth more than that. I knew it was worth like a 3X markup and that would have put it around five or six grand for the 9.6 Air Edition. Um, and then when I sold it, I'm like, oh shoot, there was that 8.0. I wonder what kind of markup the 8.0 got. And I went and looked and it was a 3X markup. And I was like, oh man, I, I just, I, I let it go really cheap. And you know, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with giving a good deal on books. I don't need to squeeze every last penny out of something. Plus, you know, when you factor in what I actually got it for, I was only into the book, like less than a thousand bucks. It was a healthy profit. And you know, it is what it is. I think that guy got a killer deal. I think that 9.6 error edition is possibly the highest graded error edition. And I think um, he's going to do really well with that book in the future. But because of this error edition, that's going to add some more heat. And again, we're still in the speculation phase. So any kind of confirmation in this book will go up even more. Daredevil number 168, the first appearance in Origin of Electra, the first solo written work on Daredevil by Frank Miller. Previous co-writer credit first occurred in issue 165, and Electra's misspelled Electra on the cover. Um, this book is, this one is just really silly, okay? There was a $13,200 sale for a 9.8. This book is not worth $13,200. Um, it was a newsstand edition. It sold on Heritage. And this is just somebody who had that FU money. I've attended a couple Heritage auctions recently. And when these things go to the live bidding, there's just bidding wars that happen all the time. And there's people with really deep pockets in these auctions. And they just see a book at 9.8 and they want it. And they don't care that they paid an elevated price, but there is nothing that justifies this book to be $13,200. It's from 1981. And if we go back and look over here, that's when newsstands were way more prevalent than direct. And it's, you know, that doesn't tell the whole story. There's also the condition, you know, the newsstand condition, uh, the condition of newsstand books oftentimes were less than, than direct, but not in this case. If you go to eBay and you look at what's going on with the availability, here's a newsstand, here's a direct, here's a newsstand, newsstand, direct, newsstand, direct, newsstand, direct, newsstand, direct, newsstand, direct. It is about 50-50 across all grades. There's no reason why a 9.8 should demand a premium in newsstand. It's just someone that had FU money. And, um, this book also isn't even rare. There's 260 9.8s. So um, this is just one of those things where the market usually catches on and corrects itself. Like people don't go and think, oh, this book is worth um, $13,000 now. Because if you look, there's a listing right here for 6500 half the price, and it's sitting there. Nobody's going to pay this because this is higher then is quite a bit higher than the fair market value. So this $13,000 thing is just a crazy example. Um, also, this happened recently with Heritage Auction as well for Amazing Spider-Man number 100, a 9.8 sold on Heritage for $16,800, which was a, over a 3X markup from recent sales. I mean, even on Heritage, there was a recent sale for 5,000 and then one month later, 16,800. And it just absolutely isn't worth that. You have copies sitting on eBay for 12,000. Nobody's ever gonna pay 12,000 for this book in today's market. It's not worth that. It's not anywhere near that. So it's a weird phenomenon that we see in the comic book market with these heritage auctions. Um, but don't get it twisted. I think now isn't a good time to buy Daredevil 168. I think this whole thing could cause confusion. And um, I would just I would just hold off on Daredevil 168 altogether, unless you can get it for below FMV, which is not out of the question because there's so many copies of it out there. Amazing Fantasy number 15. First appearance and origin of Spider-Man. First appearance of Uncle Ben, Aunt May, and Flash Thompson. Now, it is absolutely shocking that this book is still making the number one 
spot on the hot 10 list and it has to take the number one spot a 5.5 sold for hundred and thirty two thousand dollars a 61 percent increase from just a month ago that is insane and this copy the 5.5 copy was a really nice really good presenting 5.5 copy but even so that is an insane markup for this book so here's where i stand with this book at this point it's in its own category. It's in its own stratosphere. It's its own thing right now. Amazing Fantasy number 15. But one thing I don't think you can say, I don't think you can say that this book is undervalued. I, I think that this book, having gone up about 400% from where it was last year, means that this book is definitely something crazy going on with this book. But I don't think we can say it's undervalued. Any Personally, if I had $132,000 to invest, I would put it in some other um, MCU-related grails that have not reached their full potential. I think that this book has more room to grow. I think, especially if you look at it super long-term, this book could um, you know, continue to go up and up and up. But when we see gains like this, I mean, right here you can see about $20,000 um, in April of 2020, and now we're at almost $80,000. That's like 400% 4X markup. It, it's just, you, you, this cannot go on forever. At some point it will level off and it will likely correct. Um, but there's the caveat that, you know, the next Spider-Man film will be right around the corner and they are no slouch when it comes to these Spider-Man films. So it's probably just going to increase the demand more. It's just really hard to say that this is a good investment at this time because it's already seen such crazy gains. It certainly is fun to watch it go up and up. Every single record-breaking sale is a win for everyone. It's a win for the comic community. It's a, a win for the comic book market. And I'm definitely cheering it on. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and sticking with me all the way to the end. Don't forget to subscribe. Go to Bryce Comics, subscribe to newsletter, all that good stuff. I truly appreciate all of you. And we'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Bryce Comics.